this big chook. First I told you about before. My number two guy, CMG. He's put out a hit. Because big chook. First I told you about before. My number two guy, CMG. He's put out a hit. $100,000 to whoever kills Dolph. He has met with Justin. He has met with Cornelius. And they think they're ready to do it. They're definitely willing to do it. For Cornelius, it would be 50 grand, I guess, that he could waste away on purpose ass Texas. For Justin, it's 50 grand, but also a chance to make it big with CMG. To become the next famous Memphis rapper. Straight drop. What's good with it, y'all? It's Carfee. Back at it with some hip-hop news for y'all, man. We got a lot going on, man. Murder, trials, death threats, hefty prison sentences, and uh, some individuals weighing in on the Diddy situation with a whole different perspective. Maybe make you think a little bit, you know what I mean? I don't know. Hit the comments with your thoughts on it all, but let's get right to it, man. Yo Gotti getting death threats, right? with the young Dolph murder trial going on. Now, some cats might see this and be like, yo, coffee, stop it. Who's really gonna threaten someone's life in some IG comments? Like, we can't take that serious, but peep it. Nowadays, man, we see individuals posting crimes right to the gram, man. So with that being said, things that we've seen individuals do online, you know what I mean? For the attention, uh, along with a lot of the other ish, if you add up the math, man, I'm saying, yo, Gotti it should play it safe, take precaution, and take this serious, man. Because people, what's going on is uh, the yo, or I'm sorry, the Young Dolph murder trial just kicked off, right? And you see the reports coming from court, man. A uh, straight drop, uh, reportedly really was like trying to be the next big thing and wanted to collect this 100k bounty put on young doll's head by yo Gotti's brother big jook who we know ended up being killed later on himself man like bodies were dropping and then i think the funeral got shot up as well that's what i'm saying man yo Gotti better take this ish serious and you see uh cornelius smith one of three men charged with doll's 2021 murder confessed to the shooting uh, during co-defendant Justin Johnson's trial. Smith said they shot Dolph to collect a $100,000 hit put out by Yo Gotti's late brother, Big Jook. And then you see after this, Yo Gotti's on the gram posting, what's he say? Go wish money bag, uh, yo, a happy loaf day. And he, he's blessing the streets with a uh, deluxe uh, this week. You know, I guess he's dropping something new, but check it right in the comments. Better watch your back the rest of the year. Everything done in the dark shall come to the light. Your time is coming. Gotti, you gonna die, just watch. You killed your own brother to save yourself. Your time is coming, right? So some cats, like I'm saying, see this be like, yo, it's just fools talking on the gram. But when bounties were put out on individuals' heads, People are testifying about this directly in court. It's getting reported, blasted all over the internet and everything. Big Jook got killed himself. Again, I think the funeral was shot up. Like if I was Yo Gotti, I would tread lightly, man. I would be very careful, you know? Like Young Dolph was a very beloved individual. And it's just a shame at the end of the day that it came to all this, you know? Like when we see rappers beefing and whatnot, People be like, yo, I don't want to see no bloodshed. Like, keep it on wax, man. This is the result of when things go too far. And it's a fucking shame, if you ask me. Let me know what y'all think.
and that if you ain't seen, um, uh, another individual was sentenced in the, uh, PNB rock, uh, murder. It's like, that's what I mean. These rappers out here losing their lives, bounties put on cats had like, this is just crazy. But Freddie Lee Tron sentenced to 31 years to life, uh, in the PNB rock shooting. Now he was the father who, you know, they say instructed his son to go in there and, you know, rob PMB Rock, which we know the robbery didn't go down like it was supposed to, and he was killed. And the son is in a juvenile facility, you know, so there's not a lot of court coverage uh, when it comes to the news. You know, things are different because of confidentiality laws with him being a, a juvenile. But um, another co-defendant, he got 12 years, and um, the wife of Freddie Lee Trone, who I think, you know, that was her car that they used to, to drive to the Roscoe's. She got like an accessory charge. I don't know if she was sentenced yet, but I think she just looking at a couple years or something like that. So this dude right here, the father who instructed his teenage son to do this, you know, he's the one that got hit with the most time, 31 to life, R.I.P. PMB Rock, his attorney's talking about they're gonna appeal it, you know, that there's no real evidence that he supplied the son with the gun or any, uh, you know, real way that they can prove that. But hey, the jury said he's guilty. I, I, I'm looking at this like, I don't think that appeal is gonna go nowhere, man, but 31 to life. And just like we were talking about with the Yo Gotti situation, you know what I'm saying? Like, should individuals take these threats seriously? Like, this is another situation that we're talking about involving social network. PNB Rock comes out to the West Coast. He's flossing, flossing all them jewels and all that. And people from around the way see it, say, yo, let's go get this dude. Next thing you know, PNB Rock's dead, you know? So... 2024 like you got to take it all serious if you ask me you know what i mean and then last on the news we got this uh promoter here talking about diddy um and diddy's parties and you know he has a different take like i said i'll be seeing how witch hunts you know is easy right um I don't want to seem like I'm defending any of his actions and the things he's done. And I want to talk about this Diddy situation when it comes to these Diddy parties only. Um, we've seen the video of what happened with him and K uh, Cassie. We've seen the video of the U.S. attorney bringing down charges. So I think that that is a completely different subject from what I'm talking about right now. I think he needs to see his day in court and be judged. Now, my biggest issue is the conflation between Diddy parties and Diddy sex parties, which are two different things. I'm watching promoters make jokes about this. I'm watching it on page six, who was page six, which is owned by, I think, the New York Post, which is a right wing magazine using it. I see TMZ using it for content. I see all these different people, pundits, political pundits, Trumpers, you know, the Democrats, everybody using the Diddy party, the Diddy party, the Diddy party as a thing, right? And instead of being honest about it, there's a big difference between Diddy and Puff Daddy parties, as in the public parties they threw, we threw for them, because I've thrown public parties for Diddy, at clubs like Rain, at clubs like Mansion, at clubs like Crowbar, at Atlanta, at Dreams, at like, I mean, all over the country I've done Diddy parties, which people have come in the thousands and paid hundreds of dollars a piece to thousands of dollars a piece to enter this party, because Diddy threw a hell of a party. When, Diddy, when they knew Diddy was booked, they knew they would have a hell of a good time. Now, I'm watching you promoters stay real quiet and act like some of y'all didn't build the entire empire off of Diddy parties. I'm watching rappers stay quiet and artists stay quiet as if they don't know that the Diddy party is the reason why they can even get that type of money. People wasn't paying artists money like that to host. You had to do a concert you had to do a full concert to get a booking. Diddy did it where it was like, yo, we can book an artist just to do a walkthrough. 
because he just bought this left. Not that that was the first time it's done, but the first time an artist was able to get three bookings in one weekend was Diddy Party. Be and that's something you don't seem to understand. Before, an artist would be booked once. Like, you would be booked for a concert once that weekend. You had a 30-month, I mean, a 30-day block out and 200 radius block out. With the Diddy Party and what AG did, you were able to do three parties in the weekend. So artists are making more money because of the Diddy Party. Now, I'm not just justifying him throwing weird Because, by the way, sex parties are not illegal in this country. Now, what happened at those sex parties that made them illegal is what we're going to see come out in, this, in, in the court papers. Right? So, because there's little sex clubs, there's sex tours, there's, there's sex uh, cruises, there's a little bunch of swinger cruises. So, but I'm not justifying all that. What I want to talk about is how important the Diddy Party was to hip hop. The all white party. I see footage of this everywhere now, like with all the celebrities being dragged into it and everybody's being called pedophiles. Hold up. So, a nigga can't go to a party without being called a pedophile? So, if you decide to show up to a party at a club, you're a pedophile? This is where we're at right now? That you can't go to a party without being called a pedophile? So because you went to a Diddy party at a club somehow, or you went to a private invite only Diddy party, not a sex party, somehow you turned out to be a pedophile. Come on, Mr. Guys, man. Why are y'all not speaking up about this? The Diddy party opened up doors. Right? When you look at that, I've seen people posting this party that was done at, at Cipriani's, right? I remember David Icon and Jessica put together this party for Diddy's birthday at Cipriani's. You see everybody from Oprah to, to, to the president, to, to Giuliani was there, right? It's time he was okay, guy. And people are turning that and conflating that with, with, with some damn party being thrown, some sex party being thrown at Diddy's house. That's just, that's Cipriani's. You know, see my point, like, everybody, he was the hottest artist in the world. He was very commercial. And he helped to introduce hip-hop to an audience, because he had a different perception, he had a different mindset when it came to hip-hop than other people. He liked it to be fun. So he introduced hip-hop to a new audience, right? Those 4th of July parties in the Hamptons did not start with, with, with Michael Rubin and Jay-Z. That was Jessica and Diddy. You see all these people in white, and you're making fun of them, like, oh, they're, they're. those are 4th of July parties at, in the Hamptons. They didn't, they, that's, not, that's not the parties you're hearing about in this indictment. Why are y'all conflating the two? And why are y'all, a lot of artists, silent about this? And a lot of promoters, event planners, and the culture, they're insulting our culture. This ain't got nothing to do with Puff. This got something to do with them insulting hip-hop parties. Why is everybody quiet about this? I'm confused. I pride myself on being a really good promoter for the times that I did it. And I threw some of the most epic events ever. And some of those parties were Diddy parties. Now, I've never been invited to the sex parties. I don't know why not, but I've never been invited to those. But God damn it, what does that have to do with a hip-hop party? Y'all act like he didn't revolutionize the hip-hop party. He didn't make it more fun. He didn't make it more entertainment. The mic, the way he went back with the drinks and everything changed the face of hip-hop. I'm sure all these people are white and you're making fun of them. Like, oh, they're, they're. Those are 4th of July parties at, in the Hamptons. They didn't, they, that's, not, that's not the parties you're hearing about in this indictment. I'm not telling you Dougie Fresh ain't do it. He just didn't do it on a grand scale like Diddy did. It. Like, this is the reason why you're able to get into the Hamptons. This is the reason why a lot of hip-hop parties can be produced in certain buildings. Y'all don't know a time when they didn't even want hip-hop in their clubs. Then I see hip-hop going all across Hollywood and all through New York City, or to, in the city, Atlanta, and Buckhead, all in the bed. That was a time they didn't want hip-hop anywhere near those locations. At all. Some of us re helped to revolutionize that. So all you promoters that were doing the annual white parties and doing all this stuff, y'all are doing a Diddy-influenced party. Y'all are doing stuff that he branded. Now, I don't support the illegal things he did. But I don't have a... I'm, I'm not going to conflate the illegal things he did with the legal stuff he did. I'm not going to conflate the two. Right? He may be a horrible person. 
But what does that have to do with the legal parties, the thousands of legal parties that were thrown by promoters and how would that help the finance communities? How many club owners right now and, and black black club owners can say, I own a club because I started throwing Diddy parties. I know how I, mean, I know. So why are y'all, why is promoters making jokes about Diddy parties? As if y'all, you know, like, some of y'all are enjoying this a little too much. I'm doing this in defense of hip hop and as a promoter. And what we, it's an art, what we did for decades. And I'm, I'm one of the guys that fought to get us into these buildings. Y'all are used to walking into any building in here in hip hop. There was a time that didn't exist. Some people had to build that. And Diddy Parties was one of those things that disarmed certain people so that we can access that world. I'm talking about brand parties that y'all used to walking into. We didn't used to get those. The way you go to the Hamptons every day or the way you go to the south of France to throw a party or the way you go to Ibiza, we didn't used to get those. Those came from the Diddy Parties. So as you see all these super celebrities and world leaders at these white Diddy Party, he was changing the face of hip hop. He was bringing hip hop. He was the ambassador through parties for hip hop. Some of y'all are enjoying this a little too much for my own taste. And y'all act like y'all don't have abusers in your family. You know what I'm saying? And y'all ain't related to abusers every day. All I'm saying to you is whatever he did, he needs to see both God, a therapist, and the law. But I'm not going to attack the culture of hip-hop parties because I, people want to use it for political reasons or to, to, to become real haters. And all you guys staying quiet, shame on you, man. Defend the hip-hop party. Because before that, they thought we were just violent. All right, so you see this dude, um, again, what's his name? Um, he promoted parties for years and you see he had a he had a different take than what a lot of people are saying you know what i mean he's like yo everyone is joking about this and they're lumping in whatever did he was doing with these x parties to just parties that he was doing at clubs that opened the door for hip-hop and you know changed the game and you know more or less uh helped break hip-hop through to spots you heard him or before they didn't want hip hop in the club. They were, you know, and you, you'll still see some venues still act like that, you know, but this dude saying, yo, Diddy changed the game. He made it uh, more glamorous and cool and, you know, got people booked and got them a, a bigger bag and influenced other people to throw these white parties and just different things like that. You know what I'm saying? Like he's saying it's all getting lumped into the same thing like any party Diddy had was this like deviant like actual ish that we're hearing about he's saying that's not what it is that's cap and at the end of the day like it's ishing on hip-hop when people are all joking about this you know what i'm saying so comment and let me know what you think about his thoughts about this whole diddy case and you know we'll, we'll have to see the way it all plays out with court as you know more uh info comes out as the case carries on but that's gonna do it for the news on this one hit the comments share your thoughts subscribe i catch y'all on the next one peace